right. <laughs> so I'm going to record in three, two, one, record. Hello, and welcome to Jason Cavanis Experience. I'm your host, Jason Cavanis. Our guest today is Sarah St. John. Sarah, are you going to be great today? I'm going to be great. Sarah St. John is an entrepreneur, author, and the host of the podcast, Frugalpreneur, building a business on a bootstrap budget. She has created several startups throughout her entrepreneurial career of over a decade. Through her books, blog, and a podcast, her goal is to show people how to launch and manage an online business on a budget. Sarah, thank you very much for being here. I really appreciate it. Well, thanks so much for having me. So Sarah, talk about being an author. How many, how many books have you written so far? Uh, well, I just finished the rough draft to my third one. And so that one's coming out October 6th. And that one's called Podcastpreneur. Um, how to produce, promote, and profit with a podcast. And then my first book was Frugalpreneur, how to launch, manage, and market an online business for under 100 a month. And then I had Authorpreneur, um, how to self-publish a book. So uh, three books now. So I'm guessing all these are put out on Amazon, self-published? Mm -hmm. Yeah, self-published on Amazon, uh-huh. So this writing a book process, was it as hard as you thought it was going to be easier piece of cake? So the first, the first book was a little bit more difficult and time consuming. And then the second book was a little easier. And this third book, I mean, has been a breeze compared to the first two. It's like, once you kind of know <laughs> what to do and whatnot, it, it becomes easier. And I think because with the first book, I was spending a lot of time figuring out how to even self-publish, like, and, and how to do, like, pre-sales and promote it and all that kind of stuff that wasn't even really related to writing the book, just more the, uh, the details behind uh, self-publishing. And so, and that's actually why I wrote the second book, was I, actually, I had no plans to write a second book. Um, but I decided to because of all the stuff I learned from self-publishing. So then I wrote a book about that. Um, and then I started podcasting. I was like, oh, I'll write a book about that. <laughs> but um, yeah, the process definitely, once you get the hang of it, it does get a lot easier. So you're going to continue writing books? Like, you know, write a book until you have like 10, 20 books and like a series of books on how to do different things? Well, the, the current plan is to end with this book. But the thing is, is I always say that after I end a book and then a few months later, I'll get an idea for another book. Um, but I don't think if I do write another book, I don't think it will be like the first three have preneur at the end. Um, so I call it the preneur series. So if I did write another book, it wouldn't probably be blank preneur. It would just be some other book title. <laughs> so I know the time was different from your first book to the, to the book now, but from, from the from time from the first start to, to the time you publish what's the time process how long does it usually take um from the time of starting writing to the time yeah. of publishing yes. uh well and i currently have a full-time job so i was having to do it like on evenings a week well pretty much just on weekends actually um and so for that reason it probably the process took hmm, i would say at least three months that's not, not that bad. Yeah, it really wasn't that. But my books are only like 10,000 words. They're pretty short. Um, short and to the point. Uh, so, but if I had been able to write like, you know, full time, I, I probably could have been done with that, those books like in a couple of weeks, I bet. <laughs> so you said you have a full time job also? Mm hmm. So you're doing all this in a full time job? Yeah, yeah, currently. Mm hmm. <laughs> So any plans to, to get rid of the full-time job and to go all, like all in, all in, or are you going to keep on doing like this? Um, I mean, yeah, at some point, but uh, I'm actually in the process of launching a podcast production agency and, and doing some courses on podcasting. Um, and so I think once those are, you know, in full gear, I think I'd be in a better position because there's only so much money you can make with books and, uh, you know, self-published books anyway, um, and affiliate marketing and things like that. So I think the production agency and the courses are going to be the primary money makers, I guess you could say. So at that point, then hopefully maybe a year or so from that point. 
So let's talk about your, your podcast, Pukapreneur. How did that process get started? So it, it's kind of an interesting story. So I, I started my entrepreneurial journey over a decade ago. I was doing photography and I realized that while I like taking photos of like animals and landscapes and architecture, I didn't really like taking photos of people and I was doing weddings and portraits and that's where the money is. <laughs> and then, but more so than that, it was just getting so expensive to maintain camera equipment, lighting, software, all that stuff. And so I decided I wanted to go online, like launch an online business, but I wasn't sure what. And so I was started researching all the different ways to make money online. And I started like trying different things out, like drop shipping, affiliate marketing, blogging, all that. Um, having a little t-shirt company and, you know, um, but it was kind of in the process of um, trying these different business models out that I started researching like different tools and, and resources you can use to manage an online business on a budget. And I was sitting in a Dave Ramsey class uh, called Financial Peace. And in that they talk a lot about how to save and pay off debt and all that. And I was like, okay, that's all good. But what about making more money in addition to help with that? And for some reason, the word frugalpreneur came to my mind. And I was like, hmm, I could write a book called Frugalpreneur about how to launch an online business on a budget and like the different tools you can use for that. And um, so I started the book. And then while I was writing the book, I was like, I should launch a podcast called Frugalpreneur to coincide with the book. So the podcast was actually going to be a short term thing, just like a few episodes, maybe 10 episodes or something for uh, to go along with the launch of the book. But while I was podcasting and interviewing people and all this I realized how much I loved it and so it, it does uh, get addictive yeah it really does I have like 55 episodes I think now um yeah so and I've realized that with podcasting being so I mean just during COVID alone I think the number of podcasts have actually doubled of course who knows how many of those are actually going to stick around but um so it's like everybody is launching a podcast now. And I think a lot of big companies like your, your company has a podcast now. And I think it's going to get to the point where, you know, how every company needs a website and all that. I think every company is probably going to need a podcast at some yeah, point yeah, or another. You yeah. have a good point about people dropping off. Like I know at least 10 people tell my head to start a podcast after me and aren't doing it anymore. Oh, really? Wow. How long have you been doing yours? Uh, your guest 170. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> do you, f do you find that it, you get more business and exposure from it? Yeah. The biggest thing for me, like, like, like maybe a, a half of my guests have agreed to be like partners for me, like be affiliate partners for me. Right. So that's the big uh. thing too, you know, like brand ambassadors. Yeah. And plus what better way to talk about your company than have your own podcast, you know? Right. Yeah. I, I just love it. Like the connections you can make and, even like we were talking before we got started about how we'd love to, you know, be on John Lee Dumas's show or vice or have him on ours or whatever. Um, he'd be probably a hard one to get, but you know, when you get to those like bigger name people, it's like, if you were to approach them and say, Hey, can I talk to you for an hour? They're either going to ignore you. They're going to say no, or they're going to be like, yeah, it's going to cost you 20 grand or whatever. But if you say, hey, can you be on my podcast? It, now, they're really huge name people. Probably still won't necessarily come yeah. on. But um, a, a lot of the bigger name people will. Yeah, I've done, especially know. they have, especially about to you know, release a book or, or they're about to release a new product, you know. Yeah, Thomas, it has a lot to do with it too. Yeah, that's true. Like, um, I don't know if you've heard of Rachel Hollis. She's the one that did that girl wash your Facebook. I don't know. Um, I think more females are familiar with her, but um, she's coming out with a third book. And I guess her first book really blew up and she became popular. And um, I'm thinking about contacting her to see if she could come on my show while she's launching that third book, thinking that might be the best way and time to get her on, but we'll see. <laughs> so, um, so, 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 so your, your podcast is, is there any of your podcasts? 
Yeah. Uh, well, I have some solo episodes, but it's primarily interview. Okay. You've been having a lot of fun doing it. Yeah, I do. I feel like you learn a lot sometimes from other people. It almost feels like a one-on-one -on -one consultation in a way, like you're getting free advice and stuff. Yeah. People ask me, how do you get all these questions? I just ask what I want to know personally, right? And uh, that's yeah. all it is. Yeah. So what are some lessons learned from setting up the podcast? Like, like when, when, when I first started, I did the interview, right? The whole interview, I clicked the pin, right? For the whole interview. And of oh. course, you know, editing process, all those clickers on there, right? So yeah, I never did that again. <laughs> so you're wondering, uh, what, what was the question? What like what if... hard lessons you had doing the podcast? <laughs> trying to think of something kind of like that um i think like putting your phone in an airplane mode it helps because you know sometimes if your phone rings in the middle of it then that you know you have to uh, edit that out um i've never really had that problem but I, I've had like guests on my show where that's happened. They're like, oh, I usually turn this in airplane mode. I don't know why I didn't today, but <laughs> um, let's see. I mean, I guess just good communication before, well, and after, but definitely before um, a podcast, just to make sure that they, your guest has the link and they're, you know, sending out an email reminder that the podcast is coming up like the next day or whatever. And I know you're good with that. So um, yeah, yeah I definitely. think that's definitely important. So change the subject a little bit. You're an animal lover. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean? And you love all animals. You're a vegan. You don't, you just like certain animals. <laughs> what does animal lover mean? Uh, well, I love, no, I do eat meat. Although sometimes I feel like maybe I shouldn't because I do feel bad for the animals. <laughs> But I try not to think about it. I won't eat anything really that looks like the animal. So I'm not like a big seafood person. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, I love animals. My favorite is koalas. I don't, I don't know why. I've just always loved koalas. They're just so cute. And I've never been to Australia, but that's the only place that I know of where you can actually hold the koala. Um, like you can see a koala at the San Diego Zoo, but you can't really hold them. So one of my bucket list items is to go to Australia um, and to hold a koala. So great caveat, great switch. You're, you're, one, you're a war traveler. Talk about some of the places you've been. Um, so not Australia. That's on my bucket list. Uh, I've, I've been all over the U.S., but outside of the U.S., I've been to um, London, Paris, Rome, Mexico, Canada, um hawaii that's u.s but still um <clears throat> and a bunch of places in the caribbean like on cruises and things like that so besides australia what's the place you want to go to hmm. i would like to go to scotland and ireland okay they they have some interesting really pretty landscapes there that i'd like to take pictures of <laughs> um let's see I'd love to go back to Hawaii. Actually, we were going to go to Hawaii in April, but then COVID happened. And so, um, I, let's see, I want to go to Aruba. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a bunch of places, but I think those are my top ones right now. So you might've already answered this for with Aruba. What, what's the place you want to go to? Like most people were like, you want to go where? Like, why do you want to go there for? Mm hmm. Yeah, I guess Aruba maybe because that's so specific. People usually don't think of Aruba in particular. But the reason I want to go there is because they have kind of going along with the animal theme. <laughs> they have a flamingo beach and a iguana beach where flamingos and iguanas, these are two different beaches, but they just walk around on the beach. You can feed them and uh, there's also a place in the Bahamas that I'd like to go where you can swim with pigs. <laughs> and That's so, kind of random. I've never heard I, that before. I, yeah, uh, I don't know. So I guess I like animal experiences on vacation. Um, I remember when I was in uh, Playa del Carmen. Um, well, that's where we stayed, but we did like a day trip to Tulum and... Uh, snorkeled with sea turtles and that was really fun so i think i like just doing stuff with animals <laughs> so what, what made you get the entrepreneurial 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 bug 10 years ago 
Well, I kind of feel like it's always been in my blood or DNA or whatever, if that's even actually a thing, like that it could be inside of you. Because when I was a kid, um, I would gather up stuff that I would get for free, like pencils and candy and whatever, and I would sell them to other kids. At, so, a, at a high upsell, of course. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think and the just different little things like that, probably the lemonade stand, you know, all that. But it was, actually, it was probably more than 10 years ago, like 12 years ago, actually, when it really hit... Because I, it was in 2008, I had had six different jobs that year, not at the same time, but over the course of the year. And I was like, man, this thing's just, this employment thing just isn't working out. And um, so I was like, I, I just want to do something on my own. And then I started the photography business and it was relatively successful, I guess. Um, but yeah, it just was so expensive to maintain that I was like, okay, I'm going to go online now <laughs> where there isn't all that overhead cost. So the people in your, like your friends or family who are not entrepreneurs, who really have no idea what you're getting, what do they think about what you're doing? Like, what do they not get about, about your entrepreneurial journey? The ones, you know, <sighs> people like, how can you not work nine to five? You have no security. And of course, not knowing that there's no such thing as security anymore, right? Right. What, what are they not getting about what you're doing? Uh, yeah, actually, most of them don't get it. <laughs> they, um, yeah, the, the whole, like you said, like, well, if you don't have a, a full-time day job, yeah, where's the security, the insurance benefits, all that stuff? Um, if What if it doesn't work out and then you, you need something to fall back on? But um, so there's that factor. And then I think just in general, they don't really get it. Like, why are you doing all of these different things and spending a lot of your non, you know, after you get home from work, you're working on your business and on the weekends you're working on your business and like, why don't you just chill out and watch I hear, TV? I hear that a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like, like just relax. What do you, what do you for fun? I work. What are you doing <laughs> the weekend? I work. What are you doing for social time? I go networking at business events, <laughs> you know, like. Bruh. Yeah. And I think. It is, in a way, it kind of is fun. I mean, it's work, but it's also fun for us. Like, it would feel, if we weren't doing those things on the evenings, weekends, I don't know, it'd feel like something's missing. And I don't think people really understand that. They're like, you're going to work yourself to the bone or get burnt out or whatever. But to me, working on my business is probably the same as someone watching tv or going out with their friends or whatever the same kind of feeling that you get i guess so sarah you know you're doing a lot like how, day to day how do you approach like do you just wing it do you have a calendar do you like how do you plan what you're doing like how's that work for you well i used to wing it but now i do have a calendar where <clears throat> each day i have like different tasks that I should do. And then of course, sometimes I don't get them all done and then it carries into the next day. Um, but yeah, I, I keep a list of things that I need to do. So Sarah, how do you do this? It's like, suppose there's something you need to get done, right? But it's all, mm -hmm. but it never makes your top 20 list, right? It, it makes like 21, 20, and you know when you get done, but every time the day, whatever, it's never like the top priority, right? How do you deal with this thing always be on your list but never getting done? How do you handle that? <sighs> Yeah, that's actually kind of a current problem I'm having right now. I have some things that are like number 20 on my list. And I'm wondering, when am I ever going to get around to doing that thing? Um, so you're like, it's important, but not important enough right now. Yeah, because I, I do it kind of in the order of importance, like what needs to, what should be done first. Um so it's like, it might be number 20, but it's number 20 for a reason. Like it's not nearly as important as number 10 or number one or whatever. And so sometimes I maybe never get to number 20 actually. <laughs> so how do you deal with wellness? Like how do you t make sure you take care of yourself? Oh, wellness. Oh, well, I could do a better job of that. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I think as an entrepreneur and and then of course i have a day job a desk job i'm uh do accounting and so 
I'm sitting a lot, like, you know, at work. And then when I'm working on my business, I'm also sitting most of the time because it's online. And um, so I've been thinking about getting one of those like treadmill desks or, well, I have a treadmill, but I, and I could convert it. I could probably just like ghetto rig it or something, make it a desk. Um, so that would help. Um, and, you know, making sure you get enough sleep as well. That's important. And for yourself, like some entrepreneurs, they were like, they were like, you know, they work like hundred hour weeks every single day for two, three years. Other people, I have a friend, he works 21 days, take three days off. Mm. Or some people like, you know, work every day, but they take three hours off a day or whatever case be. You have a schedule you try to follow? Um, so, okay. So I, you know, I have my day job Monday through Friday, eight to five. And then I usually work on my business when I get home most days, but there are a day or two a week where I don't, or like I'll work on it until seven or 8 PM and then I'll watch TV or something to unwind. Um, and then on the weekend, usually one, I, I do stuff, work on my business, usually Saturday and then usually Sunday I, I relax, but I don't have like a set schedule. It kind of just depends on what needs to get done and, and when. And how often do you do a podcast? Like how often do you, do you release one every day, every week? How does that work? Um, <clears throat> so at the very beginning of the whole COVID shutdown thing, uh, like in March and April, I actually was working from home during that time. Uh, but there was only so much I could do with my job from home. And so I was left with a lot of hours in the day. And so I started doing a lot of podcasts during that time and was releasing one every day for a while. But now I am back in the office. And so I'm trying, but now I have a big backlog though, because I was recording tons of interviews during that time. So now I have like, I still have a big backlog of interviews to edit and release. And so um, my show is technically once a week, every Friday, but I've been releasing two a week since I've been back in the office. Um, okay. Just. Hey, Sarah. So there's a lot of people who they want to start a business. They want to be an entrepreneur. Their like episode be, not come out for six people months. Don't get started. Why do these people not get started? Like what's, what's holding them up? You think? What was that? A lot of people want to start companies, but they don't for a reason. Like mm. either they're scared or, you know, there's several reasons. What do you think the main reason is people don't get started with their own companies? Well, I guess, first of all, would be the financial aspect. Um, a lot of companies, at least if they're not online companies, you know, there is a lot of overhead, like if you need to rent out a space or equipment or, I mean, it just depends on what kind of business model it is. Um, but even with an online business, I think, I think people probably assume even with podcasting that it must be expensive to get started because they're thinking of like the broadcast studios and all their equipment, but you can get started for under a hundred dollars. Like the mic I'm using is $60. And so I think financial issues is a big one, but I think people don't realize how affordably they can start a business. Um, and then aside from that, I guess time, time is definitely one or distractions. Like if they have like kids, for example, which I don't actually have kids right now, but um, I would think that that would definitely create time and, issues. Yeah. And how do you help people start businesses? Um, <clears throat> so through my book and podcast, I basically go over the different ways to make money online uh, and then the different tools or resources that someone can use to, to run their business almost free in some cases, but definitely under a hundred a month. Uh, that's what I stick with is under a hundred a month, um, including, you know, any kind of software and whatnot that I use. So, so from you, from what you've seen so far, what kind of characteristics do entrepreneurs have? what kind of characteristics do they have? Yeah, yeah. Um, I would say, well, one bad characteristic that most of them have, including me, is the shiny object syndrome where <laughs> you're constantly coming up with new ideas and 
thinking you need to go chase that idea and start this thing and do that and and I did that a lot and I think I'm finally realizing that and not doing that as much but um but as far as like the good qualities um just the drive and motivation um I mean the the hustle I guess you could say uh, where we're just so determined to yeah, to have never success. Quit. Yeah, never quit resilience, all that kind of stuff. Right. Mm-hmm. So we talked about some of our pre-talk, but talk about the importance or the uh, positive things of having a podcast while also being a small business. Uh, the advantages of having a podcast? Yes. Um, well, for one, I think, yeah, we did talk about this earlier, about how the connections that you can develop from that. Um, meeting people if at least if it's an interview style show um, and then you never know who that person might know and that person and, and just kind of snowballs um, but even whether it's an interview show or not uh, just the exposure that you get because I mean to me a po- having a podcast is better than you know marketing it's i mean i guess it kind of is marketing in a way but better than someone finding you through an ad or something like that because yes, direct one-to-one communication right <laughs> right yeah and what's different about podcasts versus like having a book or having a blog or a youtube channel well first of all all those things require someone's soul attention and their eyes you know like they can't really be multitasking when they're reading a book, a blog, watching a YouTube channel. Um, But with a podcast, someone could be driving, they could be, uh, you know, doing the dishes, they could even be laying in bed, going to sleep or just relaxing and listening, you know, they need to rest their eyes and or they're listening to a podcast. So um, it's definitely a medium where that unlike any other in that sense and then it's more of an intimate type of feeling because you're you feel like you're listening to that person speak directly to you yes yeah i like this i like Mm. about it too yeah it'd be once you get started you get addicted to it i think (laughs) yeah you definitely do yeah sarah on your website i believe you have a a thing that says your the 29 tools you use oh uh uh-huh yeah i recently put that up there how did you come up with those tools? Like, I'm pretty sure you didn't wake up one day, Monday morning and say, here's my 29 tools. Like, what was the process <laughs> of figuring out these tools? I'm sure you a lot of trial and error. And how did that whole process work? Yeah, so it's basically the 29 tools. And, of course, there's some other tools I probably use at some point, but they're not, like, long-term. So I only put, like, the long-term ones that – or ones I frequently use um, – that help me manage and maintain and run my business but on a budget so like i listed um like if you have a wordpress website i listed siteground as the hosting that's who i use to host my wordpress site and then like for landing pages and sales funnels i use optimized press and um we were talking before we got started about talk to t-a-w-k-t-o and that's like a a chat on on your website and it's free which is i think it's like the only free one that i know of um and let's see what else did i put on there like oh king sumo for giveaways and send fox for email marketing just these different tools that are free or very affordable um that i use day in and day out to manage my my websites uh and and business in general and so yeah they're not tools that i discovered overnight i mean it was over the course of i don't know a year or two (laughs) and you're doing this all all by yourself you have a team that helps you Uh, no currently it's all by myself and what's what's your vision for your company so um i'm launching a podcast production agencies and then uh some courses about podcasting and so that's the vision that i have is to go in the podcasting direction just anything and everything with podcasting you know having the podcast teaching about podcasting 
helping people with her podcast by editing and producing their show. And are you, are you also going to be, do, be like a Lipson or AKS also? You're going to be a hosting site too, or just the editing part, production part? Oh, no. I, I mean, my plan is like, so someone will come to me and they'll want to start a podcast and, and I can even help them like kind of figure out what the podcast should be about and maybe even help them with naming, you know, all those little technical de um, details. And then, you know, basically to where all they have to do is record it and then they send me that file and then I edit it and, uh, and then I can distribute it to, it wouldn't be my own hosting site, but like I would distribute it to, you know, Libsyn or whoever. I use um, Captivate right now. Captivate, I haven't heard of them before. Oh, really? Uh-huh. Yeah, I really like them. It's called <laughs> it's Captivate? Uh-huh, Captivate.fm. Okay, yeah, there's so many of them out there. It's like, yeah. Yeah, it seems like there's more and more as time goes on. But um, yeah, so just handling that distri distribution for them so that they don't have one more thing to think about. And then like creating the audiogram, show notes, transcriptions, all that stuff. And how do you go about like actually pushing out your, your podcast and social media? How do you do that? Um, so basically whenever I have a show that gets published then the the app that i use is called crowdfire it's a social media management and scheduling tool and i schedule it in that to go out to like facebook twitter linkedin instagram pinterest and youtube and it, it it'll have the image um, for, associated with that particular episode and then the link to the blog post so i'll have like a blog post with show notes and links and whatnot um so i do that and then i don't always do audiograms but i because i've been pushing out so many episodes lately that it's like i haven't even had time to create the audiograms for them but i'm at some point i'm going to go back and do that but um yeah, that's another good I, yeah way. I, i've been doing like two a week recently but i definitely gotta go back to one a week because two weeks it's yeah it can be too much because it's always overlap and you know i used to do this i didn't do this this time i'm still doing my business yeah i, I definitely gotta go back to one one, one a week pretty soon mm -hmm. who do you use for the audiograms so i use a i use a acast for the podcasting website and i use a social media tool called smarty to push it out oh, oh okay yeah yeah. And then I'll do like 10 minute videos. I'll put it on LinkedIn, IGTV. So I, I do a lot of social media, probably too much to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's so many ways you can repurpose the content, like whether it's a, a 30 second audiogram, a 10 minute video, a blog post. I mean, you yeah. can take one piece of content and create. And people don't realize with podcasts, it's like evergreen. Like you, you can like push it out over and over again, like, Wherever, like you can like take 30, 30 second snippets, you can just so much you can do with it, you know. Mm -hmm. And of yeah. course, hopefully, your guest is doing the same thing, but some of them do, some of them don't, right? Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. That I guess that's one frustrating thing is the bigger the guest is, the less likely they are to share it. Um, yeah. And so, <laughs> uh, so it's harder. I mean, you could. I always share it myself and then tag them so that hopefully that's what i do too yeah hopefully their audience will maybe see it that way but you know it's nice when they share it <laughs> so how long are your are your podcast like what's like it's 30 minutes 40 minutes an hour how long is the talk um so if it's a solo episode it's usually under 15 but if it's an interview which most of them are i think the shortest one i've done was maybe 20 minutes but they're usually between they're 45 minutes to an hour on average sometimes 30 rarely pretty much never over an hour but yeah so somewhere in there 20 minutes to an hour so how do you how do you go about getting your customers for your business as far as like you know the teach them how to be entrepreneurs it, uh, a lot of social media and definitely the podcast actually the podcast is uh, you know i have the books but i think the podcast has been more i've gotten more leverage with that than even the books like they say have a book as your business card and so i did that 
but then the podcast ended up doing better than the books did so <laughs> yeah of course yeah so, so that's just how people find me yeah so has this ever happened to you someone suppose someone came to you say i got a business idea i want to start a business and, and you said to yourself you know what this person is not going to make it let me like tell this person that they're probably not a good entrepreneur or do you try to work them through all their shortcomings so to speak oh yeah, I don't think I've ever told anybody that. <laughs> but yeah, just try to work through it with them. Because I think anyone who, well, I would say 90% of people, maybe 99% who have the desire to start a business are probably going to be successful at some, po how, some how, point. How about the person who will come to you and say, you know what, I have this great business idea. I just know in six months, I'll be a billionaire. Oh. how do you how do you work with how do you deal with that <laughs> yeah that uh that's not realistic at all <laughs> um or even a millionaire that's not realistic usually in that short of a time frame i would just get them back to reality like <laughs> it's not gonna be an overnight thing and six months is kind of almost an overnight thing i mean it can take well for me to get to the point where i finally figured out what I wanted to do for sure full time, like permanently, instead of doing all these little things here and there, trying things out. I mean, it took me like a decade. So, yeah, I know people all, all the time use Steve Jobs' example, you know, one of the examples, but people forget Apple, it took Apple eight years to become Apple, right? That's mm -hmm. not even counting all the, all the time Steve Jobs did before he even started Apple, right? So, like, mm -hmm. yeah. Another story, yeah. Like, yeah. No stories like you know, Mark Zuckerberg back when Facebook finally like, hit it off in the like 2006, 2007. Mark, what is like overnight success? Oh, it's great if you can't overnight. It's like all the time I spent, you know, coding in my parents' basement in the dorm room, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think a lot of times we think someone's an overnight success because maybe we didn't know who they were until all of a sudden. But yeah, we never know the the months and years leading up to that that big breakthrough that they have. So if someone wants to start a podcast, they have, they have never done before, have no idea what they're doing. Just you know what? I, like when I start my podcast, I want to start a podcast. So I can market my company. What advice would you have for them to do? Um, so, yeah. So the book that I have coming out uh, October 6th, that actually kind of goes through and lays it all out as far as like the hosting, the distribution, the equipment, the, um, the the show notes that i mean like every little detail of podcasting it kind of goes over that and so i would say that would be a good place to start um but i mean the first thing i guess even before all of that is figuring out what your niche is like what topic you want to talk on you can't just yeah, you can't just go on a podcast and talk about anything and everything. Like one day you talk about entrepreneurial things and then the next day you talk about sports and, you know, you have to. <laughs> yeah, you, you, can't, you can't be Joe Rogan, right? Joe, <laughs> yeah. Joe, Rogan yeah. can do, Joe Rogan can do that, right? He has millions of viewers. They're down low. He do what he wants to. You can't do it. He's starting out. Yeah, but you can't really replicate that. It's like a one time thing <laughs> um so yeah you definitely need to niche down figure out what you like to talk about what you're knowledgeable in what you can talk about you know every week um and then you know uh come up with a name for it and a little and co cover art and all that stuff that you know that stuff, that's all the problem yeah stuff you think is easy but it's really not right the cover art the logo the name you know it's just, it's it's not as easy as you think it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I would say the first step is just niching down and figure out what it is that you want to talk about. So, um, Sarah, I understand you have some, you have some for our listeners, listeners today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They can get my first two books for free, the, the PDF version, at thesarahstjohn.com forward slash free. And, and that's Sarah with an H and then St. John is S T. J O H N. So the Sarah St. John.com forward slash free. And Sarah, can you share your social media for yourself so people can reach out to you? Sure. So my social media, pretty much on every platform, is the Sarah St. John. Like, because Sarah St. John was taken everywhere and the website. So I just went with the Sarah St. John everywhere. 
um, to be kind of consistent. <laughs> yes, and for our listeners, we'll have the links to our gift and associate media on the show notes. You find the show notes at www.cabinshrblog.com. And so you make a good point. Like nowadays, like you start a company with a case, you got you to gotta have the name, you know, for the Facebook, the LinkedIn, dot com, across the board, right? If it's missing in one place, you got to find a new name, right? And that's, mm. that's not easy, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause I had so many names in my company, but it was always taken, right? So yeah, you got to, that's something that's kind of hard to do that you don't mm-hmm. think it is. Right, exactly. <laughs> well, so what kind of luck have you had with pen interest? That's one, one social media I've, I've haven't used. How does that work for you? Um, so I think that Pinterest works well if either you're an e-commerce, you know, you're selling, you know, so let's say t-shirts or something, or if you have a blog or a podcast, um, because it doesn't, it doesn't really work in my opinion for really anything else. Like it's either something that people will buy or something that people might read or, or listen so to. So how do you use it for your podcast? I just post the, the, so for every episode I do, I do a new, um, well, it's not cover art, but it, it's the sh- podcast art, mm-hmm. uh, for each episode where it has like the picture of the guest and their name and, and the title of that episode. And then, um, so I post that image on Pinterest, just like I do on Facebook and wherever else. Uh, and then it links to, the blog post which has the audio in i didn't know i well. didn't know you could put links in penetrace i was, I was mm-hmm. just pictures okay mm. oh yeah yeah it has you can link to stuff in there and you got and a pretty d- you got pretty good uh tracks and off there um you know it's funny i in i interviewed a, a pinterest expert recently that episode hasn't gone live yet but um she definitely pointed out some things that i need to be doing <laughs> like i haven't really been doing keywords and like seo stuff i just put it up there um, it's, it's number 20 on your list <laughs> yeah, it pretty much is yeah well probably probably number 10 it's higher up there but i need to add keywords and all that junk to <laughs> to all my pinterest posts so it's more visible when people are searching because pinterest a lot of people think of it as a a social media platform and that's how i viewed it too but it's actually more of a search engine like google or youtube um because someone will just search like it's people use it a lot for recipes or for home renovations like how to whatever um so yeah i just need to work on it being more search friendly yeah that's another thing to do right <laughs> yeah so sarah we're kind of in the end of our talk can you give us any wisdom or advice or anything you want to talk about? So one thing I've struggled with during my entrepreneurial journey is spending so much time learning, like whether it's through podcasts or courses or books. Uh, and of course, education is important and you should learn. But if you spend all your time learning and never implementing what you learned, it's like, what's the point really? So recently I've adopted this, like for every hour I spend learning, I'll spend another hour implementing what I learned. Uh, That way I don't get stuck on that. I guess a rabbit hole basically of education, just reading and podcasts. And um, because if you never implement what you learn, it, kind of is pointless yeah, that's a great point sir and i, I probably shouldn't say this out loud i forget slam but like last year i was doing read so much reading and research i told myself in 2020 i'm not going to read any books so in 2020 <laughs> i did not read any books like i read so much last year right and i was like man i've, I've spent so much time reading i already have implemented so t- i said 2020 i'm not gonna read any books i read a, <laughs> probably read a couple but i made a point not to read any books of course i'll probably mm-hmm. get slammed now for that right Oh, I mean, at a certain point, maybe you don't need to read anymore. Like, if you've read, I mean, I've probably read like over 100 business books. So easily. Hey, Sarah, thanks for your time today. I really appreciate it. Well, thanks so much for having me. I appreciate it as well. Sorry about that. So when I said, when I said, I'll take this out, but when I said your name, Sarah, Siri came on. Oh, yeah. So I got to cut that out. Hey, so let's do that part. <laughs> let's do that part again. Hey, Sarah, thank you for your time today. I really appreciate it. Oh, thank you for having me. I appreciate it too.
And to our listeners, thank you for your time as well. Remember to be great every day.